welcome back students we are starting the second lecture on the module towards effective leadership today we are going to talk about what makes a person a leader in this regard we will be talking about a particular model which is called leadership challenge model this leadership challenge model uses certain case studies to examine what is called five practices of exemplary leadership and this has been researched and developed by Kauzis and Posner. What they did was they surveyed by asking people what do you do as a leader when you are performing at your personal best. Over 30 years they have done thousands of interviews and collected approximately 75,000 written responses. They identified five common concepts in this survey. They spoke about five practices based upon these five common concepts. The first one is model the way, second one is inspire a shared vision, third is challenge the process, fourth is enable others to act and fifth encourage the heart. We will talk more in detail about these five practices. Let us talk about each one by one. We will start with model the way. What is model the way? It encourages the leaders to behave the same way they encourage others to behave. That is a leader has to be a model. While he is telling someone that you should behave in a particular way, he himself or she herself shows how to behave in her action. So it is with their own voice and values that they encourage their own behavior to be a model to the others to follow. Then the second is inspire a shared vision. This focuses on developing a vision and a series of goals that everyone at the organization cares about and works toward collectively with clear understanding. So this vision has to be shared with everyone. Everyone is to be involved in that shared vision. The third is challenge the process. This encourages moving outside the boundaries to be innovative to make change. What we today popularly call the out of the box. Going out of the way sometimes and being different in thinking. The fourth is enable others to act. This is trust based. It encourages leaders to create a safe and trusting environment for people so that they collaborate experiment and engage in the whole process of doing things together collaboratively. And causes sites that encourage the heart is the most uncommonly seen in leadership roles. This concept focuses on being sincere including sincere celebrations devoted to recognizing employee successes. This should be more common too. According to Kauzis and Posner, leadership is learned. It is not an inheritance. We will be talking about traits and inheritance of traits shortly in terms of certain theories that we are going to present shortly over the coming few lectures. Kauzis and Posner say that leadership is learned. It is not an inheritance. They look at traits seen within introvert and extrovert personalities and examine how they can be developed into leaders by using those skills. So whatever traits are seen even within the introvert and extrovert personalities, they need to be developed so that using their own skills, they become leaders. For example, extroverts lean towards sharing of their thoughts and ideas with energy to larger groups. On the other hand, introverts tend to be more quiet and they usually believe in one-to-one -one, uh, sharing of their ideas and engagement about ideas to the others. So use these traits in order to develop them into leaders, utilize them to the best. That is the potential that they have and these are the features that they have. Now use them to make them good leaders is what the model says. A survey featured in the book written by them shows that honesty is the most respected personality trait that a leader can have. And three additional traits that leaders around the world according to them share are forward thinking, inspiration, competency. 
These three are the other characteristics that leaders share. Then coming to the work styles of the leaders according to this model, Kausas and Posner express an importance in having a shared vision for everyone on team or at one's organization. Staff will be more prone to feeling confident and motivated in their job if this shared vision which we have discussed a little while ago is there. Then they also talk about symbolic language like metaphors and storytelling as important components to leadership skills. In fact, they say it helps in persuasion and gathering buy-in. Positive thinking and expression according to them is yet another concept, key concept. Positivity can rub off on others around the leader. If the leader is positive, the others around him tend to be positive, leading to productivity and satisfaction. Charisma, honesty, being emotional, all are also seen as good signs of leadership. Now, I request you people to do a small activity based upon whatever I have just told, a model. Um, you can see it on net. I have given you the link in Wikipedia or you can find this. It would be interesting for you to read it. Let us now also talk about certain other models, several other models which talk about leadership. There has been an extensive research as you see on the slide on differences in leadership styles and behaviors and researchers have presented leadership models such as directive versus participative leadership, consideration versus initiating structure, autocratic versus democratic leadership, task versus relation oriented leadership. Some leaders may influence and create value through ideas, others through systems. These are all what researchers have to say about different models of leadership and some leaders may influence and create value through their ideas, others through systems and yet others through people. But the essence is the same according to researchers. So characteristics very commonly involved in the leadership are enlisted now. Early research evidence indicated that there are certain characteristics which are associated with effective leadership. They include optimism, hope, resiliency, emotional intelligence and self-efficacy. Self-efficacy refers to the belief in the capability of self that you can achieve things, you can do things. This becomes very important when it comes to leadership. So self-efficacy is a very interesting from a psychological perspective. As important and sometimes in certain contexts becomes very, very important as along with the others. Then researchers talk about skills required for a leader. As you see on the slide, those are technical skills, conceptual skills, and human skills and we have been talking about a blend of all these in the previous module extensively. Yet other researchers talk about certain more skills, for example, creativity, organizational skills, persuasiveness, diplomacy and tactfulness depending upon the context, depending upon the people, depending upon the situation, knowledge of the task, ability to speak well that is communication there are certain competencies which are required of a leader, the drive, the inner motivation to pursue goals and then there is what is called the leadership motivation which is the use of socialized power to influence others to succeed. Integrity is needed very much which includes truthfulness amid the will to translate words into deeds. Self-confidence that leads others to feel confidence usually exhibited through various forms of impression management directed at employees. I am going to mention a particular activity now. It refers to a questionnaire which has been used long back in order to identify certain features of a leader. I have mentioned it here because you may find it interesting, the students may find it interesting. You may look for web resources for what is called TP leadership questionnaire. In fact, TP here refers to the task and person which we have talked about in our earlier lectures and the reference is also given. I would also request you to go through certain videos. The activity is mentioned over there. One link has been suggested. You can follow many other links. So now today, thus far, you must have noticed the salient features related to a leader now let us move on in the next lecture to 
theories of leadership. I am going to talk about leadership theories in the context of historical development and proposition of these theories over a period of time how they have developed. This module we will not be completely covering all theories of leadership till date. I will be covering till about 70s, 1970s. Thank you for the day, we will meet again.